You're listening to the International Moving Podcast, your guide to moving to another country, brought to you by SDC International Shipping, LA's finest. An international move is exciting. It's a time to start over, establish a new business maybe, reestablish family ties, or retire where your budget will do more for you. Please enjoy today's episode, and if you have any questions about your international move, give us a call at 888-779-3962. That's 888-779-3962. All right. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jim for SDC International Shipping. It's Monday again, so that means I'm back. Good to be here together with you again. For those of you who listen to the weekly shorter episodes, thank you. We appreciate you supporting this podcast, and we do our best to provide you with the best, most up-to-date information relative to the entire topic of moving and relocating internationally Whether you're going from the United States to another country or even coming from another country into the United States, we just started writing a new series of articles on our website. And if you haven't been to the website before, I invite you to check it out. If you're at all interested in the topic of moving and relocating internationally and all the little subtopics that go with it, we cover just about everything you can think of on our Moving Tips blog. So check out sdcinternationalshipping.com, and then up on the top, you'll see there's the navigation bar. Just click on Moving Tips, and you'll get the latest articles that we have there. And what makes these articles so interesting for people is that, again, we cover so many different topics. So for example, this month, we're looking at moving from Australia to the United States. So for quite a while, we've covered what it's like to move from the United States to other countries, And then we have a lot of subtopics we could talk about just under that category, like visas and cost of living comparisons and all of the intricacies that go into an international move. Now, one of the nice things about working with a company like SDC International Shipping is that when you work with not just an international mover, but one that specializes in household moves, You're working with a company that will take care of the logistical challenges that make a move of this type so difficult for so many people. And so that's what we're here to do. That's the service that we offer. We are an international household moving company. And so we've been doing this long enough and we have very experienced people working with us, men, women who understand what a family's needs are as opposed to just a business that moves business items overseas. When we're talking about a household move, we're talking about, more often than not, an entire family move. That may mean a husband and wife, children, sometimes grandparents, or sometimes we're just talking about individuals of all different ages, whether it's somebody who's retiring overseas or somebody who's coming into the country overseas or Maybe somebody younger going to college or going to school in another country, experiencing that. When you're younger, if you're able to travel and see different places, then that is a window of opportunity that you may not have again until much later in life. Because once you get settled and you have bills and responsibilities, a career, your own business, whatever it happens to be, a lot of the time it requires for you to be located in a specific area and it doesn't give you that ability to just pick up and and travel anytime you want of course and of course if you have a family to take care of then there's even more responsibilities to go with that and that's why one of the better pieces of information that i received in my life when i was in my 20s i wanted to leave my hometown of tom's river new jersey and relocate to another state and i'll never forget my dad telling me at the time if you want to make a move Sometimes you got to do it when you're young because you have the opportunity available to you that you won't necessarily have at other times in your life until you retire. And so, and my parents and aunts and uncles and other people ended up moving here also to the state of Florida. And you know what's funny? There's that old saying, and I remember hearing it at the time before we moved that people always say the grass is always greener. And sometimes you'll ask people, was 
you know, if you ask people a year later, are you happy you made the move? A lot of times people will say yes, or maybe they'll say yes, but there's some things that we didn't anticipate. Sometimes people are just unhappy and they can't acclimate to the new setting, so they move back. Now, if you have an international move that you've made and you're unhappy, then by all means, know that SDC International Shipping is here. We already have your information. We'll move you back if that's what you want to do. So it's not like you have to be anywhere long term, both here stateside or overseas. But the reason why I bring this up is because the the more you think about it, there's no perfect situation where you're going to have all pros and, and no cons. And so An international move and relocating, changing careers, all of those things really does come down to the individual. Or in the case of a family, it comes down to what that family decides as as a whole. And so the nice thing about it is now from in my personal situation, moving from the northeast to the southeast and having seen quite a bit of the country, at least the right half of the country. I've never been to California before, and I have quite a few friends there. It's also the home base for SDC International Shipping. So I get to talk to people from there as well as people all over the country to find out what's happening in each state, what life is like there. And and most of the time, most of the complaints that people have about certain states aren't necessarily about um, certain things that the state offers. Like, for example, the state of Florida offers all of the uh, vacation-like visuals that you get on a subtropical uh, vacation. I say it's subtropical because that's exactly what the state of Florida is. It's like a subtropical climate where you have a rainy season, you have a dry season, you have a hurricane season. And hot weather aside, if you're a hot weather person or warm weather person, then a state like this, of course, may be more to your liking. If you're not necessarily a hot weather person, then maybe after you've been here for several years, you might decide that I'd rather be located in a place where there's the four seasons, discernible four seasons, you know, the winter, spring, summer, fall, and people like that experience. California as a whole, I know there's a lot of people moving out of California. You probably are aware of that yourself. It's in the news quite a bit, and people for the most part, and I'm just making a general statement here, they don't leave California because it's terrible scenery or there's terrible restaurants in the state or for for any reason like that. A lot of it has to do with finance. It's just very expensive to live there, and if you're not making the money, if you don't have the income, then that creates a lot of stress. But we can apply that to just about every state today. If you're not making enough money, then you have uh, that stress in your life that goes from week to week and month to month, and it just it impacts your life as as a whole. And there are definitely ways that you can get ahead easier, start a business easier in certain states than others. The state that I came from, New Jersey, I felt that it was overtaxed, and you know a lot of times if you're born in a certain area and you're raised there. You take a lot of things for granted because that's what you're used to. And so, you know, a lot of times people today, you talk to teenagers and they can't wait to move away from wherever it is they currently are because that's all they've had in their experience so far and they're looking for something new. The same thing goes for people when they're retiring, I think, because maybe you've read about locations like Spain, Portugal, Italy, Germany, wherever it is. You've read about them, maybe you've been there on vacation, and you decide that now you're at a point in your life where it's time to relocate. Maybe you're even going to work part-time a little bit wherever it is that you're going, and you're going to make the move. I mean, sooner or later, you have to pull the trigger, and I don't think you'll ever be such a thing as all of the circumstances being just right. There'll be a little bit of discomfort that comes with it, maybe a little bit of anxiety. But when you're working with a good international mover... That's one part that you won't have to stress over. When I mean a good international mover, I'm talking about a mover and moving company and employees that are in contact with you regularly, that are letting you know what's happening, when it's happening, how it's happening, that are involved with you in the process. 
when you're part of a community also online, maybe there's people in an expat group, they're waiting for you when you get there, they're already talking to you about the best places to live or relocate, or the company is moving you and they are, everything's going to be set up, they're helping you getting settled in, you have the moving side taken care of with the moving company. In other words, when you have the support that you need, it makes the whole thing much easier and much simpler today, especially today. So let me just talk a little bit about worldwide moving in, in general right now. So of course, the moving company that you choose is going to be crucial to ensure that you have a smooth and stress-free experience. SDC, of course, the sponsor of this podcast is here to offer you guidance because we have years of experience with international moving. That includes everything from packing services to the crating to customs clearance, the delivery. You have an expert team that's there to help you. Now, in the beginning of the year, we talked about some of the countries that were very popular. Just off the top of my head, Portugal, very popular. Spain, ultra popular over on the European side. The UK is a given. There's people going there each and every week. Canada is also a given. A lot of people from the United States go there for work purposes. But then we have some other locations like, let's say, uh, Mexico. Mexico has become increasingly popular and remains so for people looking to retire. Now, one of the drawbacks of Mexico, pros and cons of it, if we want to look at pros and cons, which of course is important, is that if you don't speak Spanish, it's true that there are enough expats there from America to help with that. But if you really want to enjoy the savings that come with living in a country like Mexico, then you're probably going to stay away from the big box stores that exist there, like the Walmarts and all of that. And you're going to do your shopping and buying your groceries from local vendors. That's where you really benefit from moving to a location like that. The nice thing about Mexico, of course, is that it's connected to the United States. And there's quite a few, again, expats there. But I have to say that the more that I've learned about that particular move, the more appealing Panama, if you, go, if you want to be close, appears to be. Again, a, a big expat location living there, super business friendly, super American friendly, really want people, expats coming there to that country now. And one of my uncle's friends has lived there for the past 25 years. He enjoys it now more than ever. And that really stuck out to me because a lot of times you hear people talking about making a move and it appears that the first five years they really enjoyed it there, but then afterward, not so much. Now, this is one of the issues that we see happening when a place becomes so popular and so publicized that the influx of people causes the economy to require greater infrastructure, which means higher taxes, more roads and hospitals and all of those things that make a society a society have to be built and developed. And so over the course of a decade, that place can become just a smaller version of what you left. All the things that you move there for are gone. That's arguably happened to certain sections here in where I live in the state of Florida. So many people want to live on the water. Living on the water is probably one of the more expensive type of locations to move to, no matter where we're talking, right? Everybody pays a premium to be on the water. But that's where issues happen is when you're on the water that you don't experience when you're not. Let me just explain what I'm talking about for, for a minute. So let's say you live, let's say you live in a state like Florida and you live on the water. Everything from the roof on your house to your AC system, to the paint job on your car and the motor and underneath the hood, unless it's kept in the garage and then even then it happens, the salt water has a way of decaying everything much quicker than it would otherwise happen in a different location. And so a lot of people don't realize that. And so when you're replacing a roof on a house, something that used to be, I don't know, I'm just going to give a rough estimate here in the United States, between seven and $9,000 now cost twice that. Air conditioning systems. By the way, 
just so you know, new legislation goes into effect in after the first of the year. Federal legislation, so there's no getting around it no matter what state that you're in, is going to double the cost of air conditioning units. So a 5,000 AC unit is now going to be 10,000 approximately because of all of the extras that they have to fit it for. In other words, for... Um, that I think they think that it's a new type of Freon. I don't remember if that's what they said or certain levels that it has to meet in order for it to be more friendly for the environment. And so that's going to hit people quite hard. Things like replacing an AC unit used to be within reason. You could always get a smaller unit if you really needed to save money. There's ways that you could cool certain sections in the house, certain devices that you can buy online. There's a lot of ways to get around things. It's the same thing that goes with heating. But, you know, when all of these things go up across the board, the cost of maintaining a house suddenly becomes prohibitive. And when you put, you know, things like increasing taxes and all of that, and it, and it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that this has happened, not just here in the United States, but across the world, where we have, I think, $34 trillion of debt right now. And, you know, people say that, well, you know, it's just greedy corporations. But it, it really isn't because the cost of everything is connected to everything else. And so, I mean, from and, and I don't want to blame any political party. I just think it's human nature that it, this has happened, it happens the way it happens. But if you look at the prices from 1900 to the year 2000 and from the year 2000 to today, then you can see that nothing ever gets cheaper. It just seems to get more expensive. Well, maybe certain things got cheaper, like a TV set, for example, or a computer. But you, you understand what I'm saying. The cost of living never really seems to get cheaper. No matter what anybody does, the wages have to go up to beat the increased costs, and it becomes the new normal. Maybe some of you who are a little bit older remember hearing stories of the old timers talking about how much it costs to go to dinner. You know, a few dollars would buy a dinner on a, on a weekend, and, and you go back even further than that. You know, they would. My dad was telling me once how much it took to how much it cost for him to take my mom out on a date, and the numbers were just so low. It's it's just incredible. But you know, that's that was then. This is now. This is the terrain that we have to live in now. So. And, and even if we could point it out, the fault out of being a, a certain group or certain political party, it seems that if you look historically, human nature, that, yeah, things can, can change a little bit for the better as far as the money side goes. And as far as a country or an area of the country becoming more prosperous, getting new business, all of that can help. But the dollar that you paid for a hot dog in, you know 20 years ago is now the you know, three or four dollar hot dog that you're buying today and it's not never going back to a dollar again. So there's that. So I talked a little bit about Panama too. Let's see. That's where I kind of left off with locations. Let's talk about a few more. Spain. Spain is has been so, so popular, not just with Americans, but Europeans in general. So I talked to a few people in Ireland that I've worked with. And a lot of the Irish go to Spain for their summertime vacations. A lot of people in the UK go to Spain, but they're only there on vacation. Now, the thing is, with more and more people moving there, the people who are living there full time aren't exactly happy with the influx of expats. Now, immigration, people migrating, it's in the news today. Here in the United States, we, you know, we have people, as of this recording, complaining about the Haitian population, Haitians being moved into Ohio. Um, where else? Okay, I'm just looking at the United States now. Spain, let's look at that. They're complaining about the number of immigrants coming in from the United States and the rest of Europe. And the reason why they're complaining is because, again, infrastructure. Everything's going to have to be beefed up, replaced, upgraded. Cost of insurance, or excuse me, cost of living goes up, taxes go up. All the things that made it such a nice place to live, at least financially speaking, are no longer there. So 
I think that's one of the things that you have to keep in mind, no matter where you're going today, that if that place becomes too publicized, then maybe you're going to have a five or 10 year gap, maybe not that, in which that place is going to be a little easier on your overall finances. But eventually, of course, the years will pass and it will no longer be as cheap as it once was. I think everybody realizes that, but they don't. You know, everybody complains when things cost more money, but yet that aside, I think that when you look at your finances, the only real solution isn't cutting back because you can only cut back so far. And maybe you've experienced that for yourself. You can only cut back so far until it doesn't make a difference. Ultimately, you have to make more. And if you can't make more, then it makes sense to go to a place where your dollar will go further, so to speak. And then you stay there until that no longer becomes the issue. And and for some people, they'll never have that problem. Some people, you know, they'll make the money. They'll be they'll organize their finances in such a way that. They don't go into debt for things. They pay cash for things, and they'll be okay. If you've mismanaged your money, of course, then you're not in that situation. If you haven't made enough money, you're not in that situation. But it's never too late to to learn how. I really believe this. never too late to learn and start managing your money better. And so that way you know exactly where you are financially speaking. I know a lot of times, and I've been there myself, where I really didn't want to dig into the actual numbers very deeply because I was afraid what I might see. But what is the worst case scenario? You learn where you are financially and you know the gap between where you are and where you need to be. How is that not a good thing? Yeah, it might be depressing for a minute or two, but at least you know where you are. And from there, you can put together the most realistic plan possible to get from where you are to where you want to be. And it's the same thing with planning an international move. If there's a place that you really would like to experience firsthand instead of just reading about it or watching videos about it online, then you make a plan. You take the first step. Just the other day, I had a partial list given to me of locations that people are moving to with SDC International shipping from now until the end of the year. Let me just read the brief list I have in front of me. The UK, of course, we already talked about that. Europe in general, South Africa, Japan, Australia, Panama, Spain, Italy, Thailand, Mexico, Canada, New Zealand, Dubai, Kenya, and even one to Romania. A lot of the people who are moving to these locations are using a combination of sea freight and air freight. The air freight takes care of the items that you need to be delivered as soon as possible. And the sea freight, of course, the bulk of your items, if you don't need them right away, you can really save as far as costs go shipping using sea freight. And remember, with SDC International Shipping, you get a customized moving plan, which means we recognize that every move is unique and you don't need to buy services that aren't needed. So depending on what your particular needs are, packing, shipping, etc., then a customized plan will be created just for your specific case. And so I, I think that covers quite a bit today. I wanted to look at this topic in general. I mean, here we are. It's We're at the last part of the year coming up. 2024 has gone by so quickly. And as far as international moving goes, I mean, I see that the hot spots of 2023 are more or less the same hot spots in 2024. A few negatives, of course. The people in Spain aren't as happy about foreigners moving into their country as they used to be. I understand that. Being here in America, you know, we experience the same thing, especially if you're living in a big city and you have a lot of migrant people in areas that were just, you know, not occupied by migrant people before. And it's the same thing in other countries, too. I This is something that we're seeing worldwide at the current time. But if you haven't been to the website yet, SDC International Shipping, as I was saying, we have a new series that we just started publishing For people moving from Australia here to the United States, we have about a dozen articles we'll be publishing this month in September. Also, a lot of articles there for wherever you're 
here located in the United States, wherever you want to move to. We published an article on moving to Japan, moving to Australia. Again, we also wrote an updated article on moving to Spain and moving to Italy. All that information is there. Super interesting. And so take advantage of that if you haven't already. If you're in a hurry, just give us a call, 877-339-0267. That's 877-339-0267. Or go and get a free quote form at the website. All you have to do is put in where you're moving from to where you're moving to. Click next, fill out the simple form, and someone will get back to you with an estimate. All right, I hope you enjoy today's episode. If you have any questions, let us know. And have a great rest of your week. Join us for tomorrow's episode. But personally, I'll see you next Monday. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks for listening. Whether you're relocating within the country or moving to the other side of the world, we're here to help from start to finish. Connect with us today at 888-779-3962. That's 888-779-3962.